I'm working on a new idea, partially new. Charles Ives came up with it first. He started. Uh, well, if you know anything about Ives' music, he was always very adventurous with polyrhythms and then polymeters and then ultimately polytempo. You can find uh, his fourth symphony as explicit polytempo markings where parts are in different tempos. And it goes well beyond meter. And you find that in Putnam's camp in many places, even uh, Central Park in the dark, and, uh, and also the antiphonal trumpet off stage and uh, awesome. unanswered question. So he's always had that bent, and apparently it came from his father, who I was admired greatly. George was uh, an adventure, adventurous person. So I have had this courageous, adventurous desire or drive to put his dad's, well, there are his two. It was a family tradition, right? his ideas in actual practice. And, but I, his dad was a band director and worked for the army. And, you know, he was, he was very militaristic. And you know, I just got a lot of that sort of military feeling in a lot of his drum writing. Ives also gave a lot of attention to percussion and drums, and especially in the Universe Symphony. Uh, anyway, the Universe Symphony is the only piece that I've found in my research that combines both different tempos and different tunings. If anybody else here knows, let me know. You would know. Do you know? I don't know. What do you not I look, know? Hmm? What do you not know? Well, if there's anything more, if there's other literature. I, I know of other poly microtonal literature, and I know of other polytempic literature, but not one that combines the two. Hmm. So I was advised to say possibly, because uh, I, I tend to be kind of Germanic in my approach to language, and that I, <laughs> I, I make commandments. Huh. This is! <coughs> Rather than, well, it's possible that can be. Which is academic. Yeah, the academics wish. want you to be the. Wishy washy. Wishy washy. <laughs> so, um, why don't we start with the Ives Universe Symphony? Actually, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to start with a, a piece I wrote called Joe Defeats Saturn. Because Nathan uh, has a pressed schedule. He's very tired. And I want to show first, I think more than any of the jaw activity that I have, I think I'd rather just show you what I'm trying to do rather than, you know, Job defeats Saturn. Do, do any of you know uh, what I'm referring to here? From the painting? Well, sure, there's the Goya painting. There's another painting. Some other guy did one more grotesque. Oh, dear. You don't know the, uh, well, Saturn, of course, is time. Kronos. Joe is uh, Zeus, one of his children. So Saturn is the Titan who were overthrown by his kids. Sorry. And, uh, earlier piece I had, I'd written for Nathan called, um, what, what is that piece called? Let's see, I, I don't even remember my name. Saturn eats his child. Saturn eats his child. Okay, so Saturn eats, yeah, yeah that's the Goya painting. Saturn, oh, that's right. Saturn eats his child, and this is uh, Job defeats Saturn, and they're both, you know, the Greek gods eventually overthrow. So uh, This piece is written in four tunings or temperaments, rather, because they're equal. There's a difference between temperaments and tunings. Uh, the difference being that the fifths are tempered, or tampered, they're cut. And apparently, there, there's two ways to tune. The overtone series, which is a natural tuning, or by fifths, or by any kind of cycle that repeats itself. Uh, generally, it's the fifth. It's the multiplying of the fifths. 
is a pure tune. And I chose uh, 19, well, 12, I, uh, 19, 31, and 53 tone uh, equal temperaments. And I chose a rondo style so that you, so the 12 could come intermittently and wash your ears. Right? So, you, so you could hear then the subsequent tunings. And what I really want is for people to hear the compression of the intervals. What do you mean by that? I mean that the intervals are getting smaller, that the space is getting smaller. And, and with Rondo, Rondo is A, B, A, C. Rondo is a uh, ritornello. So and what is, the, what is the A? Form. What? Just alternating form. Yeah, alternating. So in terms of those tunings, what is the tuning that takes the A position? Oh, that's the 12. That's the 12 tone equal tone from the tune. And uh, there, you know, this is a little dangerous because the, the out people think it's too in, and the in people think it's too out. But I'm trying to sort of border. The out people want it to be 53, no less, you know, and the in people, well, if it's not 12, I can't relate to it, man. You know, so, you know, it's, I'm trying to bridge two stubborn worlds that just won't look at each other. So it might be a bridge to nowhere, though. <laughs> <laughs> Leave. <laughs> We are the 99%. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So I, I give you another. Okay. Let's take, move chairs around so that everybody can see. Now, this back. piece is not polytemporal because obviously it's just a single line, but it is polymetric. 